Hello everybody and welcome to the AOR F1 2016 Season 12 Championship. We're at the Temple of Speed, the Holy Ground of Hustle, the Church of Velocity, the Mecca of Momentum. It's round 14 for the Italian Grand Prix from Monza. My name is Justin and joining me for all of the day's action, it's Fizzy. <laughs> yes, hello Justin. Hello everyone. That was an amazing nickname for Monza and certainly it is deserving of it because it's such a great circuit. A lot of action I'm expecting today with all those big straights, heavy braking zones. It should be a lot of fun here today. Exactly right. You nailed it. And yeah, we've got 27 laps awaiting us. Super soft, soft and medium compound tires. Last time out, it was Cupid who took his second victory of the season with a big gap down to the Flying Finn and Sayariu, who completed the Belgian Grand Prix podium. That's enough about the last race, though. Let's kick off this Italian Grand Prix, starting with the quality comparison. So today's qualifying comparison comes in the form of HCR Cupid versus Ycoms here for the Italian Grand Prix qualifying session there in the Red Bull and Force India respectively. This is obviously one of the fastest tracks on the entire calendar and the braking zone into turn one is probably one of the hardest on the entire calendar breaking all the way down from their top speed into the chicane. Both of them hitting the apex there through turns one and two, the two halves of the chicane and both getting good traction out of the corner. Now going through the long seemingly never ending Curva Grande which is turn number three, one of the most well-known corners on the entire calendar and plunging down towards the second chicane on the track which of course marks the end of sector one you can see not really too much between them barely anything splitting them apart HCR keeper potentially a tiny bit ahead but then gets quite a bit of oversteer on the exit now down into Lesmo one and you can see that Wycom's a little bit tighter on entry hitting the apex a little bit better but HCR Cupid using his technique of short shifting which we saw from Ciari as well in Germany both of them opening up the DRS now as they go towards the bridge under the old school Monza track and you can see that HCR Cupid has now built up a little bit of a lead over Wycoms as we get to the end of the second sector. Down into Ascari, Wycoms going a little bit wide but a massive moment for HCR Cupid going through the corner and then losing a little bit on traction as well coming out of Ascari hoping for him he won't lose too much time but down the uh, uh, yet another long straight all the way into 8th gear breaking just before the 50 meter board and down into the Parabolica again another long sweeping right hander and a very iconic one on the calendar and now down towards the line, running towards that start finish line. You can see that HCR Cupid just gets there first and beats Wycoms to third place by a total of two tenths of a second. So, once again this season, it is the Flying Finn, the championship leader on pole position, this time with the 121.519 here at Monza. And alongside him on the front row will be Ciaru in the Renault, nearly two tenths of a second behind. In third and fourth is Cupid and Wycombs as we saw and then Maurizio Alonso, a new driver to the league uh, coming in as a reserve, uh, he will make his debut here and starting quite high up in fifth position on the super soft tyre though interestingly. RS Falcon continue the uh, soft tyre runner whereas Snowdor also on the super soft in seventh and then Tierra Martin close with his old championship rival Tierra Limitless in eighth and in ninth only three hundredths of a second separating them and then Bernard F1 and Mike Marshmallow round out the top half of the field. Then further down we got SSF1 Alonso in the Williams and AOR Reversal in the Sauber. The top 13 here are separated by less than a, a second. And then comes the Lucky Dog 2000 now. Jason 97 F1 as the only Ferrari on the grid today. Giovinazzi in 16th in his second race, still as a reserve driver. Ahead of Stu in the Force India and Franklish in the McLaren. Then comes Cyril Hamilton in 19th position, 20 seconds off the pace. I have a feeling that is not quite representative of his actual pace. And then uh, at the bottom, Andre and Six Skills not setting a time here. And uh, Strees unfortunately again having problems with the disconnections. He uh, lost out in qualifying, was not able to get back in. Leobot and AOR Raikkonen missing out on today's action. So, get your pizzas out of the oven, and let's jump into the race for some Monza action. Welcome then to the grid here in Italy for the 14th round of the season. We're well into the second half now, and the Flying Finn is enjoying a nice 61-point lead in the championship, but that all could change today with Sayariu starting alongside him on the front row. Uh, of course, this is Justin, I am joined by Fizzy. We have a 17% chance of rain, Fizzy, but it looks like clear skies right now. Yeah, very clear skies. So uh, these guys will obviously be starting on the dry tires, the top 10 starting on the tires they qualified on as usual, and we'll be 
preparing themselves for a race around this lovely monster circuit, as I mentioned in the intro, you know, lots of big straight and breaking zones, so I'm expecting a lot of action, and also strategy could play a big part as well. Um, Looking forward to see how it plays out. It's going to be interesting to see uh, if anybody tries any sort of overtakes into Ascari. Of course, the second DRS zone, uh, which is being shown on your screens right now as the drivers are on their formation lap, uh, it's not the slowest of corners headed into Ascari here. And then uh, you've got another quick right and then another quick left right after it. So, I mean, it can be very difficult to go side by side through here. And I'm wondering which of the drivers may be brave enough to try and pull that off. Yeah, it's uh, got to be a very good overtaking opportunity in there. You know, not not quite as straightforward as opportunity as you mentioned because of the corner bin. You know, oh my word! Actually, <laughs> what is going on here? Uh, so we got Y comes driving into the back of a red bull of Cupid. So they've been sent to the grid. But anyway, I completely lost what I was talking about then. So uh, <laughs> yeah, probably more overtakes into turn one than Ascari. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna <laughs> Ascari will be more exciting. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, I, I kind of hope we get some side by side in there because it'll be very inter interesting to see if they actually will be able to keep it clean. Yes. Uh, but uh, yeah, we got a nearly a full grid. Unfortunately, Strees uh, got disconnected in qualifying and was unable to get back in. Uh, but I think everyone else is on the grid, so it should be a fun race there. And Justin, we're about to start, so take us away. Yep, here we go, getting ready for the lights now. On board with TRL Limitless down in ninth position, just inside the top 10 as the lights are preparing to go out now. Engines revving and we're away. It looks like a decent start for everybody in six down. Can't really see the top five all that well. It looks like some side-by-side -side battling actually going on up ahead. Two three-way battles heading into turn one. Martin, Falcon, Snowador all side-by-side. -side. Limitless just hanging behind, deciding he wants to see what's going to happen here. And HCR Cupid already gaining a position up ahead of Sayaru, who's having troubles, big troubles at the first chicane for Sayaru in the Renault. That's going to drop him down into eighth position below Limitless. Wycom's now making a move for that second place position. And meanwhile, fl the Flying Finn in that Williams is really taking off. HDR Cupid breaking Whoa. very late for that second chicane. He's going to get a, a corner cut warning for that one. And Wycom's is going to have to hold on to that third place position in the meantime. RS Falcon looking very feisty behind the, the new driver Maurizio Alonso. Uh, who is on the super soft tires worth pointing out and limitless going up the inside at the oh. second Lesmo a little contact there with Falcon in the McLaren He can't get back on circuit say are goes through Mike Marshfellow goes through and Snowador as well Here comes reversal as well who started way down the order uh, on the medium compound tires We're now on board with this with the Sauber driver into Ascari now uh, He's now up into the top ten and with those mediums uh, He could find himself in a good position later on in the race visit especially if the rain comes at the right time for him yeah, exactly, yeah. Starting on the mediums is always uh, a good call. If you're starting outside of the top 10, it can bring up some interesting and uh, potentially beneficial uh, strategy choices later on as we have got to the lead from the flank fin there. Shame for Ciario though, starting on the front row with him, but uh, we have to, uh, I guess we have to see a replay exactly why he lost so much speed out of the first chicane. And then uh, later on as well, Falcon lo losing a lot of speed out of Lesmo, so I think, uh, actually, was there a car on the side of the track there? <laughs> I saw a lot of smoke oh. on the side of the track. Oh, oh it's contact! Mike Marshall have been hit in the back by, I believe, a manor, maybe? Snowy. Oh, snowy? Yeah. Yeah. Snowy coming out of nowhere from him. That's going to drop him way down the field as well. Uh, so it's been quite a bit of action here in the first few laps. And now Cyril Hamilton under pressure from Alonso behind him. Might want to try and force himself up the inside into the second chicane. He certainly got part of his car alongside Breaking later as well. And uh, Hamilton seemingly backing out of it. Probably a wise move because this is another one which is <laughs> very tricky to go side by side. Yeah, and uh, all those guys are actually on the soft tires, so I think uh, I think you're right. Uh, the medium runners could be in a good position here, and especially with these guys getting held up with a lot of traffic and, and whatnot, uh, that's certainly going to play into the hands of the medium compound runners who are inevitably going to be running the soft compound tires or even super softs potentially uh, towards the later stages of the race. I'm not sure how likely it's going to be to do a one-stop, especially if it stays uh, uh, dry the entire time. Um, yeah. And, but yeah, uh, Limitless now making the move on Maurizio, the new driver uh, for P5. Again, Maurizio on those super soft tires. Uh, they, these are the tires that they qualified on, though, so those super softs are already, I imagine, going to be falling off a little bit. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Limitless are getting very close to back in there. And obviously, the super soft starters will definitely not be able to uh, go one stop in this one. The soft try Some of the soft guys might try it, but I think it's going to be tricky even for them. As we now got Wycombe has been passed by Gerald Martin for a third. It's it looked like he breaks slightly late, but I think he got to slow down. And now side by side between Snowador and Falcon into the chicane as well. They're going to be side by side. It's oh, unforceable for oh, the track. It's no. getting very close. Oh, and there's contact between them. And that's going to put them both in the gravel and dropping them way down the field. So, uh, 
even more costly, of course, having those kind of mistakes uh, very early on in the race when the field is so backed, uh, bunched together and they're going to drop a lot of positions. Cool, and we've got some Ferrari on Ferrari action as Jason 97F1 trying to make the move on Lucky Dog into the second chicane. Not quite able to go around the outside on that one. SDSF1 Alonso losing a position to Burnout F1 up the inside of the first Lesmo. CRL Hamilton looking to follow him through, but there's more contact. He gets stuck oh. on one of the walls and he's lost his rear right tire. So that is the end of the race for him. Very unfortunate. Uh, no safety car as per usual in AOR for the season, so uh, no need to worry about that. The racing will continue on un uninhibited. Uh, TRL Martin still holding off Ycoms and the Limitless, now making up the top five. Maurizio down into six, could lose a position to Sayario here, though into Parabolica. No, wasn't able to get it under braking. Uh, Sayario instead opting to get a much better run through that corner. He's definitely going to pick up the DRS here, uh, but I don't even think he's going to need it. He's already side by side as they cross the start finish line. DRS active now. Uh, Wycom's now moving up ahead of Martin. Uh, it looks like HDR Cupid now starting to break away and actually starting to catch the flying fin. Yeah, wow, yeah. It's a big gap up to the top two as we now more side by side into turn one. Oh my word, that's a very late <laughs> breaking from Lucky Dog, who was defending that beautifully, actually. Oh, uh, oh. Reversal right ahead of them, he's lost it on the grass. Oh, it's a good save, but he might just drop down behind both Lucky Dog and Jason, and he does in a deed. And Jason getting a great run out there as well, but he claimed that inside line for the second chicane and uh, has got it covered as long as he can slow it down, and he can. And wow. keep it on the track just about as well, I think. So. Good move. So a uh, big gap ahead of him as well. Though it's a few major gaps forming, as you know, as we mentioned, between uh, second and third, and then also ahead of Jason up to seventh for him as uh, Andre now trying to hold off Mike Marshmallow. He might have a move into the Lesmo actually. <laughs> not, a, not a conventional overtaking <laughs> location, but Mike making it work. That's going to put Andre under pressure from six skills as well, from not getting quite the ideal uh, line. And there, this could potentially be the first side by side through Ascari, but I think uh, uh, Andre just had him at the at the end of the straight there. Yep, RS Falcon uh, not a, not having to worry about any side-by-side -side action into the Scari there. Wycom's uh, making his way out of the Parabolica to finish this fourth lap. He's already coming under attack. Look at that. Uh, to his right-hand side, I believe that is TRL Martin on his right-hand side in the Mercedes. Yes, it is. And Limitless has a great view of it. Oh, no. He's oh, the no. only one with a slipstream. He shoots up the inside. They're going to be three wide into the first braking zone, but Limitless breaks much, much later. Uh, not able to take a very clean racing line, though. Wycom's with the switchback through the chicane. He might get both of them. Uh, he's, he's up in rich mix at the moment. It looks like he's just about got them. Limitless now picking up that slipstream. Could he try a diving maneuver into the second chicane? Yeah, it looks like he's going to get the inside line here in the Haas. Here we go into the braking zone. Uh, breaks a little bit later than Wycom's does and reclaims. Or well, I don't even know if he was in third at any <laughs> point, but TRL Limitless up into third. Uh, Wycom's now into fourth position. Jason 97F1, as you mentioned, in that eighth place position. Oh, reversal with another little mistake there behind Lucky Dog. I don't know if there was contact there. I just saw reversal a bit out of sorts there, uh, but it looks like he might be struggling with this Monza circuit, but yeah, that is a uh, pretty decent sized gap, as you mentioned, Fizzy. Yeah, uh, I didn't see any contact between those two, but uh, and there might well have been a little bit. And now on with Sierra's caught up at least to the back of these guys now. Martin uh, behind Wycombs now. I have to say, uh, into lap one, at the side of this lap, Wycombs with a beautiful awareness to cut underneath when Limitless kind of forced his old championship round from season 10 wide as we're now going to have three wide into Parabolica, Jesus Christ. Sierra luckily breaking a little bit earlier than Wycombs, uh, but actually managing to pass Martin, who must have been quite cautious there on the outside, for realizing that he had two cars on the inside and maybe uh, being happy to break a little bit early, try and get a good exit, but he hasn't really made too much inroads in Sierra on that straight just yet, all of those guys having DRS of course, and another man with DRS is going to be a reversal. Uh, behind Lucky Dog, trying to go for that inside line and uh, have to nail the braking Whoa. zone. Don't hit into the side of <laughs> Jason as well. Uh, uh, briefly going into the neutral even, uh, getting this car turn in there. And it seemed to work though because he did manage to get the move done in the end. And now, Justin, here are some replays from the start. Yeah, so this was uh, Say Are You in the Flying Fin, and here comes uh, HDR Cupid on the left hand side, the Red Bull on the outside of the Renault into turn one. Now he's got the inside line for turn two. Slight con oh, oh, yeah. Awesome. That was a bit naughty from Cupid. I would say all the time you have to leave a space and uh, and Monza that is uh, yeah incident between Sayaru and Cupid under investigation and yep that had nothing to do with lag or anything like that it looked just as damning from Cupid's point of view unfortunately for him 
Uh, here's what it looked like from Wycom's point of view through the sh Yeah, you can... Uh, that's the kind of three angles now that we've seen it from where it looks kind of like his fault. Uh, that was that parked car you were talking about, Fizzy. Uh, we just saw it again in that replay here. Uh, and yeah, this was the contact between uh, Marshmallow and uh, it was Snowy, I believe. Yeah, it was indeed. So uh, that's a shame, obviously. It's very easy to uh, break a little bit too late going into this corner. But, uh, you know, because of that, that's why you have to be so cautious. And oh, reversal. Oh, he took out both sour well. drivers. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> luckily the reverse was not as effective as Mike, but yeah, it's uh, quite big. And then Mike getting involved with Cyril Hamilton later on, and Ooh. Hamilton getting forced in the wall. I, that's a tricky one, because it looked like for me, let's say from Mike's view, so it leaves a decent amount of room actually, but then it just gets stuck on each other. Right, that's a side so, pilot uh, issue, uh, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that is bad luck, for uh, especially for Hamilton there, uh, losing his red tire. Yeah, I don't want to blame Marshmallow for that one either, uh, just because uh, he may have <laughs> missed his missed his breaking zone. Or no, it, it wasn't even him that missed the breaking zone. But yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't blame him for that one whatsoever. Uh, and that was say, are you moving back up into fourth position? Why comes uh, coming under attack? Yeah, this is uh, I believe the same move. Uh, climbing all over the curbs Ooh. there, getting a. <laughs> Uh, a bit of a corner cut warning there, so he's going to have to be on the lookout for that. And then that just killed all of his momentum coming onto this straight, which caused him to lose that position to TRL Martin, dropping down into sixth position. But still, uh, still with that group, he's not out of touch. Uh, and speaking of out of touch, uh, it does seem that that gap between Cupid and uh, the Flying Fin has started to grow again. Possibly the Flying Fin had a mistake in the earlier stages of the race or was, uh, le uh, you know, backing off. Uh, to save the tires as Cupid now uh, becomes the first of the front runners to come into the pits from the soft compound tires. Uh, that is going to promote Sayaru now up into second position after grabbing that position off of Limitless. A nice straightforward move for Sayaru uh, long past the Haas uh, it, before even reaching the braking zone for turn one. Uh, Jason 97F1 now coming oh under attack from the other Renault of Burnout F1 is going to have the inside line gonna have to go around the outside for the second part of the chicane nice uh space given uh nice respectful driving from both of those guys uh and reversal stick uh just just behind i mean he's tucked right underneath the gearbox of that ferrari and here we go with the slipstream once again is gonna put the ferrari alongside the renault and with the inside line we've seen jason make this overtake and he's done it again he yeah. i don't maybe he's practiced that specific overtake because that's the second time he has executed that perfectly yeah, I uh, <laughs> I haven't heard of too many occasions of uh, drivers, you know, specifically practicing overtakes at a certain corner, but certainly <laughs> Jason reading both of those situations he's been in so far very nicely, uh, nailing the breaking point, and he might have to find himself under pressure, though he's not defending the inside line into oh, Ascari, which is interesting. Bernard, oh. he's got him, yeah. So Bernard's practiced the Ascari move, Jason's practiced <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the second chicane move, so maybe they'll keep switching around like that uh, if they stay as close uh, together. Finn is going to respond to Cupid going into the pits on the next lap. So Cupid will have a one lap undercut. I don't know if he got out in clear and clean air or if, if he got into any yeah. traffic, but he might at least allow Cupid to close a little bit of the gap down with that undercut move. Uh, these guys are all going to stay out. Obviously, uh, Lucky Dog Reversal both on the medium tires. I can't quite remember what uh, what Jason and Bernard were in. Bernard losing a lot of speed there. Obviously, the, one, the only guy here without a DRS. And it's dropped two positions. Jason and Reversal are going to remain side by side into the chicane now. Getting very close together. Jason forced onto the sausage curb. Bernard nearly losing the back end as well. And here is where Flying Finn is going to come out in P12. Uh, behind six skills, but uh, crucially ahead of Cupid. But not by much, actually. So he has definitely yeah. used that undercut, uh, you know, to some advantage at least. Yeah, he's definitely closer than uh, he was when he came into the pits. Uh, now it's time to find out uh, if Sayaru is going to go for the same type of strategy or if he's going to go for something alternate as he now leads this race with Limitless and Martin seemingly doing some battling behind. Uh, so that maybe gives Sayaru a little bit of breathing room as they head into Ascari. Uh, takes the corner very nicely as you would expect for the championship title contender. Uh, it looks like the team radio is saying we're ready for you to box this lap, so we could be seeing Sayaru coming into the pits on those soft compound tires. Limitless uh, holding on to that second place position from Martin uh, down the back straight and into Parabolica. It really didn't seem like Martin was gaining very much. I don't know if that's because of a poor exit out of Ascari or what the deal is, but uh, it looks like Limitless is going to pit. Sayaru does not. Oh, no! Oh! And that is very unfortunate. Uh, is that That's a drive-through penalty, right? That is a drive-through. That is the harshest penalty you can get, and that's the one you always get for speeding in the pits. 
And it is a vi you lose a lot of time here at Monza for pitting as uh, HDR Cupid trying to get by six skills now, trying to follow behind the flying fin. Actually, using that slipstream to his advantage, very very Holy. nicely getting pull alongside the flying fin. I wanted to talk about strategy, but no. Here <laughs> comes Cupid for the de facto lead of this race, essentially, depending on what goes on with Sayariu. But uh, Jason 97 and AOR re reversal uh, for what is now fourth position, but was uh, a little bit further down the top ten. Uh, before everybody started pitting, but these guys still uh, continuing on. Lucky Dog as well joining this battle, uh, just behind Jason 97F1. And uh, again, Sayariu is still hanging out, TRL as well. Uh, incident between Sayariu and Cupid, 10 second penalty for Cupid. Uh, so that is very unfortunate for the man who is essentially uh, trying to uh, bring the fight to the Flying Fin. So uh, that kind of ruins that. But uh, we'll, we'll hopefully still get some very nice battling going on. Uh, Wykimes, meanwhile, getting the slipstream on Martin. Uh, also, the inc incident between Mike Marshmallow and Snowador. Snowador receiving a quali ban for accumulating 25 penalty points on that one. Uh, I don't remember if penalty points are new this season, but I know it's kind of a new concept uh, for people with AOR. But uh, yeah, if you if you have incidents, you get penalty points, just like with F1, uh, and that can eventually result in uh, quality bans, race bans, etc. Uh, so uh, that's unfortunate for him. The Flying Finn now trying to make a move on Mike Marshmallow. Uh, got much, much better traction. They're on the same compound tires, but very different life in them. And here comes Cupid now. Oh my He's going to make it side w three wide into turn one. And it looks like actually the Flying Finn is going to back off Mike Marshmallow with a diving move. That was a very, very late breaking maneuver. Nearly overtook Andre. Uh, the Flying Fin, though, still pressurizing uh, uh, HCR Cupid, and Cupid actually losing that position at the exit of that first chicane, and those clouds are looking pretty dark there, Fizzy. Oh, yeah, I hadn't actually noticed. The clouds are starting to come in a little bit, uh, considering it was nearly clear skies uh, when we started this race. Uh, Limitless getting out ahead of CRU worth pointing out. I think Wycombs was uh, behind him. Didn't quite see where Martin was or if he even pitted. <laughs> Can't remember but uh, either way Flying Finn is stuck in some traffic now. Mike Marshmallow and Andre both are right ahead of him. So he's gonna want to try and make uh, efficient work of these guys and uh, hope that Cupid kind of gets held up a little bit so that he can shake him off. But this looks like he's gonna have the move quite nicely done here. I know actually Mike fights back into Ascari and I think he actually held on to that as Ciari now into Ascari as well. That is a lot of overspeed for him. The DRS is clearly very very powerful on Holy both hell. of the DRS traits here. So the Ciari is going to go ahead of Limitless. Cupid now challenging Finn who clearly didn't get the, oh. right, the best exit out of the Ascari and now he's going to try to go around the outside of Parabolka which would be a crazy move and he actually gets a benefit of uh, Mike's slipstream a little bit but then Mike's move over to the <laughs> other side to give Finn some slipstream. So uh, uh, let's see here. So yeah, Finn oh moving God. on the inside. Oh, there's no space there. Oh, and he's going to have to back out of it. So keep it ahead of Finn for the first time properly in this race. Yeah, but uh, the Flying Finn, I think, is going to get a much better exit. He was able to take the racing line through that first chicane, so we could see uh, some more side-by-side -side battling into the second chicane from those guys. But in the meanwhile, uh, Jason 97F1 going side-by-side uh, -side with Franklish. Franklish grabbing the inside line at turn one, moves up ahead. Oh, and Mike Marshmallow oh. has made contact with Andre. Uh, HCR Cupid slices his way through, narrowly avoiding any sort of carnage or anything like that. The Flying Finn trying to do the same thing, and it does look like Andre is going to stay nicely to the outside of that Lesmo. So the Flying Finn really not losing any time whatsoever to HCR Cupid as we get onto the back straight with the DRS being activated now as the drivers cross the line the Flying Finn is going to get the benefit of the DRS and the slipstream as well I'm sure he's using that rich mix and that Williams as well as they approach Ascari but it looks like they are not going to go side by side through Ascari we have seen overtakes into Ascari no yeah. side by side through through uh, Ascari just yet though uh, and we can see how much Andre is struggling actually he lost several car lengths just just going through Ascari there uh, Wycombs in uh, 10th position at the moment, but I believe, uh, yeah, he has already made one of his stops, so uh, he is a little bit higher up, essentially, uh, but Sayaryu is pretty far from this battle. Six skills is still out on his first stint, if I'm not mistaken, uh, but here here we go, round number seven, maybe, I don't know, Cupid in the Flying <laughs> Fin, uh, but Cupid, uh, or excuse me, the Flying Fin, uh, moving ahead, grabbing that, uh, essentially, race lead once again and what's what's even worse for cupid of course is that if he wants to win this race he needs to overtake the flying fin and get a 10 second gap yeah yeah and he, he, he probably isn't aware of that at this moment in time obviously uh so he'll just have to you know keep battling keep you know doing as best as he can and uh, let's see what it uh, amounts to in at the end so uh now on board with crew who is kind of i think 
the lead car out of the you know the, the following pack if you consider the guys who started behind Cupid and, and the Flying Fin uh, it's uh, at least ahead of Martin unless uh, is Limitless ahead of these guys I can't quite remember I think he way. is I think he, he is, is actually okay so Ciaru is going to go nicely uh, through on six skills. Martin's going to follow him and actually get a decent slipstream, but not uh, been able to get close enough into Ascari. So still, oh, he was gonna lucky. Don't have to wait. We're going to have to wait for that side by side into Ascari. Reversal actually leading the race at the moment on those medium tires. Lucky Dog also on the mediums that he started on. Remains to be seen how long they can go into the race. Now, oh, no, no, not, not quite side by side, but a very nice late breaking <laughs> maneuver from Franklish there, up to 11th ahead of Jason. Um, yeah, I'm a little bit confused in terms of strategy. We're gonna have to see how this works out, so really, as the race goes on. But again, round 500 <laughs> with these guys. Cupid back ahead, and it's turning into a bit of a slipstream back away. Yep, yep, it sure is. They're just swapping positions and probably uh, just uh, g uh, just increasing that lead that they already have. Meanwhile, uh, that impressive move by Franklish into Ascari was all for nothing as Jason picks up the DRS on the start finish straight and gets him back into turn one with that benefit. Andre coming out of the pits on the soft compound tires at the end of lap 13. So uh, oh, if it was actually, I forgot about his drive through. That's why. I was that's right. Was. That's right. I knew. Yeah. yeah, it was Lucky Dog that was actually in yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I knew. There was a Haas up there, but yeah, I just—I guess I assumed it was limitless. Even though Lucky Dog, I think, has been the lead Haas driver for a number of races at this point, so uh, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised to be seeing him, seeing him up there doing something a little bit different. But uh, Sayario, meanwhile, uh, coming under attack from TRL Martin. We saw this coming. Uh, I think last lap was when we saw these guys uh, making that overtake on uh, six skills, and uh, it looks like Sayar did Sayario even lift for that potentially? I'm not sure. It looked very easy. Uh, for Martin, I don't think Sayoriu made it too difficult for him, but uh, Martin just flying by uh, gets the move, uh, gets the position into Ascari, and here comes Lucky Dog out of the Parabolica at the end of lap 14, and he is not going to pit, and neither is Reversal. They're going to stay out. Yeah, these mediums going a long way into the race, uh, it seems, and uh, welcomes now trying to make what should be a relatively easy move on six skills who look to be going to the pits there actually so he's will maybe be the first uh, medium starter to go in as we now have CRU on Martin again so uh, obviously CRU you said uh, it might well have been a lift into Ascari uh, on the previous lap because uh, you know there's a reason we're not seeing too many side by sides through there is because that if they try to go side by side they're uh, there they'll lose a lot of time both of them so uh, it's <laughs> you know, a big risk playing, too playing it smart exactly yeah it risks, uh, uh, you know, uh, some contact and also uh, losing time. So uh, let's see though if uh, Falcon will stay side by side here. No, not quite. Mike getting the move for 14th position. So, you know, <laughs> you mentioned earlier talking about strategy. There's not much time to talk about strategy around Monza because there's constantly overtakes going. On. Yep, and some more Renault action here. Taylor Martin and Sayaru once again down the back DRS zone and again. Say, are you is just gonna get it? I, I mean, I don't think he lifted, but he, he does seem to just be kind of moving over to the left, like, there you go, take the racing line, that's fine. I'll just yeah. slipstream you on the run down to the Parabolica and get the DRS for the start finish straight. We could just keep this up all day, so. Uh, but uh, HDR Cupid's still holding on to that lead over, oh, is Lucky Dog now finally coming into the pits, and so does AOR Reversal. So, 12 laps Very remaining cool, for these guys. What was that? Very cautious pit entry for him. <laughs> I think he definitely yes. has a second or two there. I, I've been noticing that from the drivers. Uh, well, everybody except for Limitless. Zing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> very cautious entries. I think I saw the Flying Fin coming into the pit lane at like 42 miles an hour. And understandably, you know, these guys are concerned. Uh, there's a lot of tire wear here, and uh, it's a heavy braking zone into that pit lane. And with the manual pit entrances for, for F1 2016, that's added, uh, you know, a whole new level of complexity. And uh, Franklish uh, getting the move once again. Here's another couple of drivers here that just can't seem to be separated. Uh, actually, Jason 97F1 has just had a very exciting race in general. He does find himself in only seventh position at the moment on lap 16, but uh, he's had lots of overtakes and lots of clean racing, which is always good to see. Yeah, and uh, seventh isn't only actually for him, considering he started in like 15th, I believe it was. So he's made up uh, quite a, a lot of positions, uh, like he has done many times this season, actually, as Martin again. Third <laughs> lap in the row, I think. <laughs> it's going to move Deja ahead, vu. easily ahead of Ascari. Yeah, I don't know if you're watching replays or uh, actual <laughs> takes by now, but uh, <laughs> Jason's going to repeat what he did. Go ahead of Framling, flying Flavor Angry, Lovish. That's his new name now. And there was that reversal behind there, trying to follow through actually, who obviously has just had to come out of the pits. And yeah. Reversal, and I think, well, I think Franklin's managed to keep him ahead, but those, it's a trio now. 
We're battling it out, and uh, let's see if this one's going to be as easy, Justin. Sierra <laughs> with the slipstream, with the DRS, and there we go. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm starting to wonder if these are actually different overtakes, or if it's just the same one, and you guys have <laughs> edited the lap number at the top right to say oh. something different. And uh, I noticed uh, Finn made a move for uh, P1 over there uh, on Qubit as well, actually. Oh, nice. So I, those guys I, are about five seconds ahead. I, I, I doubt, you know, unless something happens to the front two, that Sierra and Martin will actually be able to close the gap. But certainly, the way they keep giving each other DRS and not losing each other time, they're at least giving each, uh, uh, each other a bit of a chance. Yeah, by not being side by side, you know, uh, into apexes. Oh, oh God. Speaking of side by side. Moment, yeah, for RS Falcon and Mike Marshmallow, a little coming together. Burnout F1 going to gain a free position as a result of that. Unfortunate for Burnout, he started in the top 10. Uh, I don't know how many drivers still have yet to make pit stops, but uh, I'm, I'm always, I'm always kind of pulling for, for Burnout, so um, uh, hopefully uh, some people still have yet to make their stops or something, but uh, here we go with uh, <laughs> this battle still going on. Jason97 coming under attack from AOR Reversal now for sixth position. Decent size gap up ahead to Ycoms in fifth position, who is running a very lonely race. Uh, Reversal uh, gets an easy move into Ascari there, but yeah, on the minimap there, you can see the well. first two, and then third and fourth. Uh, something happened to RS Falcon. That's a set of super softs at the end of lap 17. I don't know if he's going to be able to do 10 laps on a set of super softs. Uh, and then this is, uh, say, are you... Uh, losing the position to Martin on lap 19. This time it 19. was a replay. <laughs> but yeah, th this time it, it actually is a replay. Uh, we're, we're, so I guess you guys are being honest about that. Uh, <laughs> lap 21 now, so uh, not many laps to go. Less than seven laps remaining in this race. And uh, yeah, so you can see on the minimap just ahead, those are the two leaders. Uh, that's the Flying Finn and Cupid. Uh, say, are you and Martin doing their thing that they've been mm -hmm. doing all race long? <laughs> uh, but it looks like things might be heating up a little bit. Uh, as Fizzy mentioned earlier, the Flying Fit did, did regain the lead of that race, but uh, ACR Cupid oh. trying to get it back. I guess it's all about pride at this point for Cupid. Yeah, it might well be. Obviously, you know, if anything, even if he won't get the win, you know, theoretically he might, you know, it's always a good feeling to cross the line first at, at least. Oh, we got a pit stop now. So Cupid's going to go in at the end of lap 21. You know, you can see the cloud cover is getting very... You know, <laughs> very major, but uh, obviously no rain in the air just yet. Uh, so Martin goes back ahead of Ciari. So yeah, Finn left out on his own, and actually not too far ahead, but only about three seconds now ahead of these guys. So it's not yeah. long to go in the race, but um, you know, I feel like they're getting time to be closer. Yeah, and with Ciari and Martin uh, now slipstreaming each other, and with uh, the Flying Finn not having the benefit of somebody to slipstream and DRS off of anymore. Uh, that could potentially uh, bring us a three-way fight for the lead of this race. Uh, Cupid is going to come out in seventh position just behind uh, Jason, 97F1, and I imagine, I mean, he's pretty close to him, so I imagine he's going to be able to grab that position, but is he going to be able to build a 10-second gap? I'm not entirely sure. That penalty, uh, really, really tough to swallow for Cupid. I think it's really hurting him in this race. Say, are you? Uh, now say, are you is the one making oh, the overtake yeah. on the on the back straight. <laughs> Uh, so they've decided to trade uh, trade positions, and uh, now he's going to get it into Ascari. Uh, and again, uh, Jason 97F1 coming under attack on lap 22 now from ACR Cupid. Uh, Cupid wasting no time. Fresh in Super Tough versus old mediums. That's going to be the easiest move of the day, I think. <laughs> yep, even even before uh, long before the breaking zone uh, into Ascari. So Cupid does move up into sixth position. Oh, and that's a track limit warning for Jason. Oh, oh you got to be careful there. <laughs> Very, very carefully. I don't know if he's got a penalty yet, but he's certainly going uh, going to want to avoid getting any sort of penalties. Again, uh, Ycoms was running a bit of a, a lonely race, uh, too far behind the TRL Martin and Sayaru battle, and too far ahead of the AOR Reversal and Jason 97F1 battle. So uh, he was puttering along in fifth position. Oh, I think I've, I've I think I've seen some rain, Fizzy. Oh, I think I've nope. spotted some rain. There are only four laps remaining after this one is completed. Um, so this is going to be very interesting. Uh, depending on how quickly the rain starts coming down, yeah. we could we could see some people staying out uh, on slicks oh. even when it's wet. Oh, okay. So now we're now we're really mixing it up, making the overtake into the Lesmo. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, it, uh, it, it'll be interesting to see what happens with this precipitation. At the moment, though, it's very light. It is very light, but yeah, it's always it's always uh, <laughs> you know a difficult situation for the drivers when the rain comes this late in the race because you, you know, when it's that close to the end you don't really want to pit, but uh, if it gets too bad you might have to limitless all the way down in 17th. Oh, and it's on the inters, limitless gone onto the intermediate tires. 
Doesn't seem very wet on the track yet, but you can see though, you can see obviously a few of the drivers have clearly lost grip. So maybe it starts to come into intermediate conditions a little bit. Let's see what Finn will do. He's got four laps to go in the race and he stays out on very worn tires as well. 70% on the rear, I think I saw. And uh, Maurizio Alonso in his first race in this league, holding uh, on to a big bit of a train. As I saw in the top right there, yeah. Martin passing Sierra into the pit lane. <laughs> yeah, and they're, and they're both in the pit lane as well. Oh gosh, this is getting very oh. scary. Very oh. scary. Oh no. Oh no, and Holy that is a shit. big moment between Maurizio Alonso and Mike Marshmello in a third car I think was involved. It is now raining carbon fiber on the back of DRS straight. That's not water droplets, that is carbon fiber exploding everywhere as Lucky Dog now moves up into fourth position uh, deciding to stay out on those slick tires. This could be an inspired choice from the Haas driver here. Uh, he's gonna yeah. come out, or he's gonna, uh, TRL Martin is gonna come out just behind him on those intermediates. Say, are you and reversal as well, all coming in for the intermediates as well. So I think we're gonna find out pretty quickly whether or not these inserts are the right choice. Yeah, definitely. Wycombe's still out as well on the mediums. You so, can feel uh, the understeer. Yeah, definitely. You can see as well visually that this track is starting to just get quite damp, quite, you know, the water's starting to settle on the track now. And also the tire wear as well, that's not going to help. You know, you got the <laughs> starting, the track is starting to get slippery and your tires are already slippery just because of the tire wear is so bad because they've been out on these tires for a long, long time. If they're going to go to the end, they have to, you know, they've only done one stop in this race so far, most of them. And there we go, Finn deciding to go into the pace. It's probably a smart move because even though it's only three laps to go in the race, you know, you lose so much time when you are uh, on the wrong tires for the conditions. So uh, I think uh, these guys have made the race choice now because the weather, the rain is clearly coming down, coming down quite hard. Yeah, it really is. Um, this is now the end of lap 24 for these guys. The lap counts are uh, being covered up at the moment, but I do believe this is the end of 24, start of 25. So three laps to but go. Cupid's out still. Yeah, in I was going to say. In the lead. Yeah, Cupid is still out and I think was running quite well. Uh, the Flying Fin is out on the intermediates. We've actually got a blue flag situation uh, going on. Uh, Lucky Dog as well. Uh, on those uh, soft tires is still going fairly decently. He, yeah, he's the one that had Sayaru and Martin come out behind him. Uh, they didn't gain loads on the previous lap, but now it does. It definitely does seem that the intermediates are starting to come into, the, uh, starting to come alive here as more and more water starting to form on the track. Uh, Lucky Dog breaking nice and early for that second chicane, making yeah. sure he gets it all slowed careful. down. Yeah, because uh, staying out is all for nothing if you end up driving straight into a barrier. So he is going to lose these two positions to the intermediate runners. And, we, and, and yeah, I think you're right, Fizzy. With two laps remaining, uh, he might end up dropping down as far as 7th, 8th, ninth, something like that. Yeah, but I, I, I'm pretty sure that's around the sort of area he was anyway. So, <laughs> you know, the, you know, someone in his position in the lower part of the points, it might just be worth a gamble as long as the rain just doesn't get way too heavy on the last lap or so that you know he starts spinning off the track but oh race control incident between Mike and Alonso and Maurizio Alonso as well so that was only the massive one will be investigated after the race so obviously it happened quite late in the race so uh, Stuart need a bit more time to look at it it was a big one as well so uh, we'll get a verdict on that one later couple of Alonzos, not up yeah. to no good. Yeah, so uh, the Flying Finn uh, starts lap 26 behind HCR Cupid, who is going to continue on leading. Uh, Lucky Dog 2000 now as well, starting the penultimate lap of this race, and with Wycom's uh, just three point... Wow. wow, he gained like a second and a half just in Sector 3, which is mostly just straights. Uh, yeah. So basically, he gained a second and a half through Ascari and, and Parabolica, side. and that's it, yeah. uh, <laughs> and, and nothing else. Uh, you could just see how much the Haas is struggling in these conditions now, and he's still got one more lap to go. Uh, I'm starting to wonder if maybe if it would have been more beneficial for Lucky Dog to come in uh, on the previous lap at the end of uh, lap 24, but um, I really don't know. It's a pretty big gap down from Wycom's to reversal, as you can see. So. Uh, I don't think Lucky Dog would have lost too many positions, but yeah, he's going to drop down to sixth now. 
Uh, and there is another car not far behind. I think that was reversal on the intermediates. I think Lucky Duck's gonna lose that position. Uh, and then I think he's probably gonna lose one more. And here's the one that we've been most interested in. HDR Cupid leading this race on fresh super soft tires, but with the rain, they are really starting to fall apart. And here comes the flying fin with those intermediates, much better traction through Ascari. He is going to retake the lead of this race with Giovinazzi just kind of <laughs> watching from behind. He's just kind of hanging out watching these two guys. Yeah, he's got the first class seat for this battle, but it's not going to be much of a long battle here because Cupid has no grip at all through Parabolica. And uh, same with Lucky Dog out of Ascari. So reversal goes through up to sixth position. Luckily, there's a few seconds down to Jason. Nine seconds even down to Jason. But uh, I don't think it's enough. I think Jason's yeah. going to catch him. Yeah, it, it seems very, very treacherous out there. 83 though, so. miles an hour through Parabolica. <laughs> that, that doesn't I seem normal. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think that's about what endurance cars do through that corner in the dry, yeah. so it's it's still pretty impressive. But still, uh, for, for the F1 speeds, not very good. Uh, say, are you and Martin, though, uh, still battling. Lap 27. Yeah, oh, all race pretty much. And HDR Cupid is drifting Curva Grande. Uh, uh, so that's that's interesting. <laughs> I didn't know you could drift Curva Grande, but uh, here we are. Yeah, you can. And uh, yeah, oh, it looks like where they come. Oh, that's aggressive. That is very aggressive from Cupid. Uh, and that is going to be a big help to Sayaryu. Look, he's still in between. Yeah, he's still holding up Martin. This could be exactly what Sayaryu needed. He takes the racing line through the second Lesbo, carries good speed onto the back straight. Jason 97 F1 now catching up to Lucky Dog. Again, I, yeah, I mean, he gained seven seconds in sector one alone yeah. there, Fizzy. So I think Andre. Uh, potentially, yeah. I mean, Lucky Dog may even drop out of the points if this Ooh. keeps up. Uh, HDR oh, Cupid, man. though, still holding on to fourth position. He's got why? Oh, he's got a three-second time penalty on top of the ten seconds he's already got. Uh, the Flying Fin, though, going to come around Parabolica for the final time to win another Grand Prix. I believe this is his eighth win of the season. Is that correct? Uh, that would be correct indeed. Yeah, eight wins in 14 rounds, so not bad whatsoever. More than half of the races, uh, he has picked up the win. Uh, Ycoms is going to cross the line in fifth position, but he will get promoted up to fourth uh, due to the litany of uh, penalties going on. And uh, Lucky Dog 2000 now, in addition to being on the wrong oh, compound no. of tire, has also run out of fuel. <laughs> Yeah, That's unfortunate. Yeah. So, yeah, it's not quite work out the gamble for him in the end, and he can't even turn <laughs> through Parabolica. At least he's going to hold on for the one point. Limitless is coming into it now. Can he get to the line? Frank lifts crosses line now ahead of him for nine. Oh, and I think he's yeah. going to get it. I think, I think he's going to get it. It's fine, Yay! it's fine, it's fine. Lucky Dog gets at least one point for all <laughs> of that trouble. And Limitless out of the points again, which is uh, interesting. And we now got Falcon coming around Parabolica as well. Of also out of fuel. Out of the points, yeah. <laughs> Not going particularly fast, so uh, Falcon, he did pick up a decent result last time out, I think, but uh, he's, uh, you know, relatively poor form in recent races, he's going to continue. So let's see what we got replays of. Uh, now we got CRU out of Parabolica on a Martin. This was on lap 23. So, oh yeah, this is when they went to the pits. Let's see. So he breaks quite oh, early. Oh, Martin, oh, oh, Martin must have been right on the limit. But what a move. <laughs> Into Touché, the pits. Touche, sir. Yeah. Fantastic. And here is that big incident on the back straight. And oh, oh. That, that, that. both front wheels came off. <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. That's a Let's big see. one. And I, and this is I from the new was coming. I knew it was yeah. coming, Fizzy. I saw yeah. him going up the middle, and I was like, "This isn't gonna. This is gonna end in tears." Oh my god! It's even worse from the point of view of the Toro Rosso. Oh, yeah, he, man. he couldn't really see anything. He was just driving on the left side of the track, and suddenly he's just spun around and uh, no longer in the race. It was the same for him in his debut, I think. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. He was, I, I it was gonna always going to gonna be tricky. I think Mike Marshfellow probably to blame for that one. Uh, that was a little too aggressive. Uh, there really wasn't enough space for a car to go through there, so... Um, but the Flying Fin, as I mentioned, does pick up that win. TRL Martin, despite a three-second penalty, is going to uh, complete the podium behind Sayaryu. So, uh, 
Uh, I believe that's the top three in the championship. Uh, no, no, Cupid's, uh, uh, or at least Cupid was top three. We'll see. We'll see momentarily what the points look like now. But uh, yeah, Flying Fence, ARU, and TRL Martin, that is your podium. Wycombs grabbing a fourth position for Force India. Nice drive from him. AOR Reversal getting another top 10 finish for his efforts. Another great drive for him. Uh, ACR Cupid down in sixth position uh, after not fitting the intermediate tires. Lucky Dog in 10th with the same sort of pro problem. Jason 97 and Andre BCF 1997, both uh, picking up some points as well as Franglish. Uh, but yeah, some good driving actually today from Franglish. Uh, I, would, I would say he was probably my overtake of the day, so uh, happy about that one. But uh, a pretty exciting race there, Fizzy. Uh, you know, uh, the, the little bit of rain right at the end, I think was really, really nice. Yeah, I think it definitely made it interesting with the, the two guys gambling and the rest of them probably making the right choice in the end to go in for the Inters, but uh, you never quite know, you know, sometimes it's fun to see how gambles pay out and it didn't quite work out for those guys, but uh, it was, uh, it's always interesting with the rain, we have had a lot of rain in recent races as well, so uh, who knows? Why do you get so some more in Singapore? <laughs> yeah, I would expect it. So uh, there we go. Uh, TRL Martin does close down on HDR Cupid just now. A seven point gap between the two of them. Meanwhile, the Flying Finn extending his lead at the top to just under 70 points, actually. Uh, 68 points is the gap now. Uh, AOR Reversal holding on to that fifth place. So Reversal finishing exactly where he was in the points. Uh, Limitless, despite not finishing at Monza, still holds an 11 point lead over Jason 97F1 for that sixth place position. So uh, Limitless, despite uh, being pretty far down, uh, is also still higher up than you might expect given re recent performances, so he is still hanging on in there. Uh, Franglish moving up uh, with uh, after picking up a couple of points, uh, so he increases his point tally to 20, uh, same as six skills. He's now in 18th position, up ahead of CRL Hamilton. And Snowador is still the only driver who has oh, yet man. to score points. Surely by the end of the season, Snowador has to have one point. That has to be <laughs> And uh, Toro Rosso uh, now moving up ahead head of Haas despite being on the same points tally and that lead up at the up at the top uh, between Williams and Red Bull nearly 100 points at the moment uh, and just one point separating Red Bull and Renault that is very close oh yeah spicy for that second place but there uh, Williams out of touch a little bit the flying fin having you know a fantastic season you can't really I, I don't want to make comparisons to noble really because he's such a legend of the league five-time champion but he's certainly having a noble-esque season at the moment in terms of the gap to the guys behind yeah we'll have to do our noble comparisons in the year 2021 but for the <laughs> meantime for the not so distant future make sure you guys join us for the next race which is of course going to be the first night race uh, to ever be an f1 it is the singapore grand prix another street circuit uh high potential for rain should be very exciting i'm looking forward to it uh thank you as always for joining me once again fizzy yep yeah, it's been it's been great it's been lots of action as we anticipated around Mons uh, and uh, singapore a <laughs> very very different track it's a bit interesting to see how the drivers cope uh, yeah, I'm not sure how the drivers will cope, but I think as spectators, we are in for a treat. But that's going to do it for the Italian Grand Prix. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Bye-bye.